All right, so the game system is a six-in-one sequencer based on a classic pixelated arcade aesthetic. It's one of Pittsburgh's few digital modules, and it turns on almost instantly and remains in the exact same state that you left it in. Now our panel tour starts with the 8x8 LED matrix. Each pixel can display as red, yellow, or green to convey what is happening in each game mode. Surrounding the matrix are four buttons, each with a solid click. Top left is the game button, which toggles through the various algorithms in order. Bottom left is mode, which varies from game to game, but usually adjusts the movement of the in-game cursor. To the top right is the reset button, which true to form, sets each game back to its default. Finally, bottom right is the clock button. It either acts as a tap tempo or as a clock divider when in external clock mode. Jumping down to the bottom of the panel is the joystick. This is used to move the cursor or change sequence settings on the fly. It also features a button which makes various changes to settings depending on the game. Moving up the panel are outputs 1 through 4. These vary from game to game, but generally consist of random sample and hold style modulations, clocks, and gates that are triggered from various game events. And finally, right in the middle of the panel, we have the gate inputs. When these receive gates, the module emulates actions like moving the cursor or pressing buttons. There's also a clock input for external tempo. This introduces an opportunity to have a modular system that controls itself. And to close out our panel tour, here are the technical specs for the module. And now onto some demos. Our first game mode is Meteor Shower. In it, you pilot the red ship as the green meteors fall past you. The ship can be joystick or autopilot controlled. The first output is a sample and hold style modulation that triggers every time the ship hits a meteor. The second output is a gate that's also triggered by the ship hitting a meteor. Now our third output is also a gate, but it's triggered when the meteors hit the ground. And finally, the fourth output is just a basic clock. To add more meteors, simply press the button on the joystick. This goes up to 25 total on screen. Here I've set up a drone which combines the H and P outputs on the Telharmonic. The stepped CV is sent to degree, while the triggers are sent to an ADSR and also to the harmonic lock. Next up is the variable length sequencer. To edit a step, all you have to do is move the joystick left and right until you get onto the desired step you want to edit. Then move the joystick up and down to set the pitch value for that step. You can also press the joystick button to turn off the active step. The first two outputs are just the pitch CV, whereas the third one is a gate triggered when the sequencer hits an active step. The fourth one is a clock output. The sequencer can move in multiple different ways such as forward, backward, pendulum, and random, leaving lots of opportunities for new sequences. Here I'm using the sequencer to drive the disting VCO, but also track the frequency on my filter. The gates are again controlling my ADSR, but I'm also sending one to the wave shape input on the disting. Next up is the four channel drum sequencer. Outputs one through four, intuitively enough, are linked to the four tracks on the sequencer. The drum sequencer navigates much like the regular sequencer, with the major difference being that including a step only requires the push of a button, and you can move up and down throughout the sequences. One of the cool features is that pressing mode switches sequence one with sequence two and sequence three with sequence four. This allows you to sequence some really cool fills or breaks, and you can even use the inputs to trigger this. Here's a simple patch where I'm using the gates to trigger the disting sample player with some drums. Because I only have one sampler in this patch, I'm using a triggered envelope to change the sample type. Next up is the 1 through 8 clock divider. Each of the four outputs corresponds with one of the yellow squares, which can be set manually or set to roam by itself. By pressing mode on the active output, the dot will move by itself. Some cool things about this mode is that it not only allows you to pick which clock divisions you want, but also how you want them in phase with each other. Also, the ability to self-patch it is very cool. In this patch, I've loaded up the same sample player, but in this case, we're using an envelope to mess around with the speed of the sample. We've also got other clock outputs controlling the active clock output via the input matrix.
Next up is the probability machine. This features two sets of CV outputs and two sets of gate outputs. The first set of outputs is controlled by the green bursts on screen, and the second one is controlled by the red outputs. By moving the cursor to the right, you're increasing the chance of an event happening, whereas if you move that cursor down, it increases the complexity of the events. This mode is really fun to just play around with the cursor or even set it on the autopilot mode and see the arrow bouncing around. In this patch, I'm using the noise output and putting flux all the way so it gets into the whistly timbers. The two stepped pitch CVs work in opposite directions on the tonic and degree inputs. Meanwhile, one of the gates triggers a negative envelope which pulls the flux down to allow more of the noise sound through. And the final mode we'll be looking at today is the Euclidean Rhythms Sequencer. This is a gate sequencer that automatically generates patterns based on two numbers. On the left in green is the total number of steps in the sequence, and on the right in red is the total number of active steps. From there, the algorithm does its best to evenly disperse the active steps over the entire sequence. Now, output 1 is a random stepped CV voltage that changes when the current step marker lands on the red active step. Output 2 is a gate that's triggered when the current step marker lands on an active step. Output 3 sends a gate out whenever output 2 isn't putting out a gate. And output 4 is the clock output that's triggered on every step. Now, the two axes of the joystick are used to set the quantities of each number, whereas the button actually inverts the entire pattern. And finally, the mode button is used to set the direction of the sequencer. In terms of a musical application, there are some interesting organic sounding patterns that can be made, and maybe even some polyrhythmic sequences. I tried my best by multi-tracking some drum sounds and making this dinky little marching band beat, so I hope you enjoy that.